What is our number one responsibility? To show others Christ in us. A little bit of, um, and this isn't a deep dive historical background of the book of Hebrews, but historically speaking, um, this letter, which is amazing, okay, there's been no proof of who actually wrote this letter, but who actually wrote the letter? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. But, uh, this letter was designed for exhortation, um, which is encouragement to the body of Christ. So I pray that tonight we can be encouraged. I want for y'all to leave encouraged, guys. Alright, so starting in verse 5, Hebrews chapter 2, starting in verse 5. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing out of his, outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death, death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom, by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. That is the word of God. Let's go ahead and uh, pray. Father, I pray for... Your Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct us, Father. And, and I just pray for hearts in here to, to be prepared to receive this message, Lord, by Your Holy Spirit. And I just pray, Father, that, that this evening, Lord, we glorify the Son of Man. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank You, Father. We love You. We give You all the glory and honor. And I say this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So what I want us to know today, and first off, the sermon title is The Son of Man. That Christ was fully God and fully man. Okay? And today, we, we get to dig deeper into the humanity of Christ. So I want us to go back from verses 14 to 18. We're going to focus on verses 14 to 18. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, 
and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. I want to tell you right now that if the Holy Spirit is inside of you, the devil has no power over you whatsoever. We have resurrection power living inside of us. Because he says that since he took part in it all, he destroyed the power of death and the devil. And also know this, there's no fear in death for believers. Right? There's no fear in death whatsoever. The sting is gone. Praise the Lord. So it's very healthy for us to understand that for those of us that are in Christ, with death is life. The apostles, Paul said it in the book of Philippians, that, that death is gain. We have such a mission in this world and we get to love the Lord in this world, but can you imagine the day that we see His face and we get to be in His presence forever? That's what our glorious hope is. That's what our glorious uh, hope is in this life. So who in here can say that at one point in their life they were a slave to sin, they were a slave to fear, they were a slave to the devil? But Jesus came to destroy that, right? And He will take it completely away. Completely wipe it away clean to where now you are free in Christ. And there's nothing that anybody can do about that. Verse 16, for surely it is not the angels that He helps, but He helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, He had to be made like His brothers in every respect so that He might become a merciful and faithful high priest. We're going to go back to high priest here in a minute, and I'm going to talk about Him being an advocate for us. In the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Guys, the propitiation is the epitome of the doctrine of salvation. It is the fact that He took it all upon Himself and now we don't have to deal with that anymore. Now we can walk in freedom in Christ and know that He took it for us. Can you imagine? That? I mean, the Bible says, and, and it was we talked about it earlier, but uh, actually I talked about it in the letter that I read, but guys, there's no greater love than, than, than one that will lay His life down for His friends. To understand that Jesus paid the price. For because He Himself has suffered when tempted, He was able to help those who are being tempted. So we're going to focus on that last verse right there. So turn over to Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians chapter 5. And so I want for you right now, as you are turning your pages, to get your mind focused on the fact that we live in the flesh. Okay, so we all live in the flesh, and we have a constant battle with the flesh. But the amazing thing about it is realizing that Jesus was in the flesh and so He can relate to everything that we're going through. Every single ounce of, of, of battle that we have in our flesh, He understands. Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 16, says, But I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. Think about the things that you want to do. You want to, you want to be full of love. You want to be full of just self-control and, and long-suffering, right? But he's saying there's a battle there. There's a constant battle there. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And I want to say right now that if you are in Christ, you're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. But now we can walk in knowing that we are in Christ and we can demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. Now the works of the flesh are evident. All right, so he, the Apostle Paul, writing to the letter to the church in Galatia, is explaining, he is detailing the works of the flesh. So the works of the flesh, the Bible says, are sexual immorality impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Who can say that they've done all of those things times a million, right? I know I can. 
Well, most of them. I, don't know. I was just being generous to everybody, I guess. <laughs> but those are the works of the flesh. Okay? Those are the works of the flesh. But right now, I want to tell you that what the Bible says is that once we're in Christ, we are to nail our passions and desires to the cross where Christ already took it. He, we, we are to nail that on the cross and to give it to Him. And then He says, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So saying if you're living in your flesh and you're not being led by the Spirit, of course we know that if someone passes away and they're not indwelt by the Spirit, they don't have a relationship with Jesus, then they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then comes the good news, right? And I want to encourage us today to know that the Bible is very clear about, and this is the, the, the sad thing about modern preaching I guess you'd say and there's a lot of good ones out there but I want to tell you one thing one of the things is that people are very quick to get into the good news but see the epitome of the gospel says that we must talk about the bad news first and then we get into the good news right mm -hmm. well you talk about the bad news first though and the bad news is is that if you die in your flesh and you're not being led by the spirit then you will not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the Spirit, and I want for us to really, really write these down. I didn't make any notes. I'm sorry. I didn't write any scriptures down for y'all. Uh, been a little bit busy building some fence. But um, I, uh, I want for us to really think about the fruits of the Spirit. These come from Christ. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ, I guess I said a little bit early, a little bit early on this, those who belong to Christ, Jesus have crucified the flesh with its desires and passions. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. And so this is a picture that's a clear-cut picture of those that are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and those that are walking just clearly in their flesh. But again, I want to bring encouragement to you and to know that you can be saved, but we still deal with these battles. But now we have the ability to walk in freedom. We have the ability to not be under the law. We have the ability to know that once we seek God in surrender and in holiness and in obedience, and, and I want to encourage you, like, think about this, okay? Every morning when you wake up, just pray like, Lord, help me. Help me. Holy Spirit, give me the ability to walk in that, you know? And, you know, situations come and go and we deal with these things that are tough. But again, it's not of your own power. It's of the power of God inside of you that allows you to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit showing you the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and the self-control. And I know everyone in here has self-control, right? Hmm. Or patience. <laughs> but, again, and I want for us to really know this, and Jelena, I'm glad that you're here because it's kind of like, you know, there, there are going to be tests. There are going to be battles. There are going to be these things that come up. But the constant focus that we need to have is knowing your identity in Christ. You know who you are in Christ, and you know that that old person is gone, and now we're to walk in the newness of life and know that this period is a lifelong, every single day walk with Christ with a really long word that I say, a lot, and it's called sanctification, but this period of sanctification is, is much easier whenever you allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of you, and you ask for your Father to help you, and you don't give in to your flesh, but you say, Lord, I've already crucified those passions and desires on the cross. I've given them to you, Father, and now we're able to walk in the newness of life. But every day is a battle, but it's always just if a situation happens and you have one of these things that just come up, you know, just give it to Him. And just realize that, that you can do that now. But I just want to focus on that for a minute. And I want for us to really, really write those, you know, highlight it in your Bible and, and really highlight Galatians 5, 16 to, 20, 16 to 26. And to realize that now we're led by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and it's important for us to really know that. Let's go back to Hebrews real fast. 
Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent that the Lord set up, not man. So now we see that God, the Son, Jesus Christ, is our great high priest. He is constantly there, constantly interceding on the behalf of the believers, constantly like praying for, I want for you to realize it, praying for you. Like constantly like, like pleading his blood on your behalf and knowing that the, the enemy, Satan, the devil, whatever we want to call him, he is the accuser of the brethren. He is constantly accusing you of things that you have done before. But I always want to point you back to the cross and to know that if you have put your full faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you have come to Him and the repentance of sins has been granted to you and you've turned away from those sins and now you're living for Him, those things are done and finished with. They're washed away in the blood and they are finished. But... Whenever, the, whenever you, you have this guilt and this shame and these different things that come in, we are to always know, always lean on this verse. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. No condemnation whatsoever. But we still have this filthy dude who's always accusing the brethren, right? He's accusing the brethren of things that we have done in the past. But constantly know that if it's in the past, leave it in the past. It's done with. It's finished. It's done. He's forgiven us for everything. Everything is finished and wiped away. Everything is done. And, and I would just encourage us today to not hold on to anything that's inside of your heart. That, uh, you know, I was, I was with uh, a couple of, of uh, people today in the church. And, and um, we talked a lot about forgiveness. And if there's any unforgiveness in your heart, you're basically allowing the, you know, I guess I would say the enemy or, or yourself or whatever evil to, to trap something inside of yourself that is causing you pain. And what do we do? We want to keep it inside of ourselves. And instead of just giving it to our Heavenly Father, then that release comes and then finally we're like, wow. But a lot of times we don't understand because we're not explaining the grace of God, but He is so gracious. Like, so, so gracious to us. Um, I don't know if we understand the amazing grace that He bestows upon us. Uh, it is amazing to realize the things that I've done, the things that I've said or, or whatever, and to know that He holds nothing, none of that against us anymore. So I would just encourage us to know that, that, yes, we have the accuser of the brethren, but he has no power because of the blood of the Lamb. Jesus' blood covers the sins, washes them away, and it's completely done and finished with on the cross. And I want for us to know something, guys. Is Christ enough for you? And I say that unscripted because he's not enough for a lot of people in this world. Even people that say they know Him, He's enough. He is worthy. The Bible says, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You know, uh, and I just say that, guys, it's Christ alone. Christ alone. The riches of Christ. I read Ephesians 1, 1 to 13 uh, um, Monday night during the Lord's Supper and... Uh, Guys, we have spiritual blessings bestowed upon us that are mind-blowing. But that's why we're to live by faith and not by sight. Don't focus on the things that you have here, but know that we have much better things to come. All right, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. My goal in this and in us really getting... Hey! hey. Us getting into the Word. <laughs> us getting into the Word of God is... My goal is, is that we, we actually get to know like, and I know because, you know, we have a lot of new people and a lot of people that, that are growing in the Word. And that's why, like, we're going through the Bible, guys. But the first thing is, let's hear some Bible pages flipping. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kylie, you got a Bible or what? I just messed with you. There's Bibles in the seat. But uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. 
But whenever we get into the Bible, this, this is medicine for our soul. It is medicine for us. And, and, and I want for us to really just know that this is the daily bread that He has given us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. So we know that He is the mediator between God and man. He is our mediator. He is our advocate. He is like our, just think about like your, I mean, He's Lord, He's Savior. I, and there's so many names. The, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, our advocate, our, uh, y'all help me out here. You got any words? Huh? Friend? Our friend, our King, our, I mean, everything, guys. Um, he is it. That's why we come here, right? I don't come here for myself. I don't, I mean, I come here for y'all, of course, because he's, he, you know, but I come here for him, guys. You know, and I would just encourage us today to know how good he is. I don't just get up here and just say these words and try to be all fancy pants up here. No, I'm telling you that he loves you and he loves all of us and we're his body. No matter where we are, we are his body. And so I want to say this again. And I already said this, but I want to say this one more time. He is constantly interceding on our behalf before the Father and we have the accuser of the brethren, the devil who has no power because of the blood of the Lamb. And I want for us to really understand that. And to know that since He is the Son of Man, He is the... Ex and, I want, and I want to say this, I want to add this in there. He is our example. He is our example of how we are to live in this world. So I want to talk about one word tonight. Humility. Humility is Christ's humility. Realize this. He came from glory. Mm -hmm. Down here is a lowly servant. Right? And for those of us that hear those words and then think about how much they love Him, realize that He sacrificed it to be a, a, a bond servant, the Bible says. And He was the Lamb led to slaughter and he didn't even open up his mouth. He, he, he just let them accuse him, right? But I also want for us to know, theologically speaking, that this was the plan of redemption from the very beginning of time. The Father promised the Son of people, which are us. We are the promise to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the promise to Him by the Father. And the Holy Spirit promised to seal the deal. Hence, sealed by the Holy Spirit. And once we're sealed, there's nothing that anybody, anything can do about that. Nothing that any evil can do about that. When you are sealed by the Spirit of God, and you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, and your Father is Father God, then there's nothing that can ever beat that. But sadly enough, there are a lot of people in this world that are just okay that they belong to the devil. And that just blows me away. But it proves our sinful nature, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that proves the fact that Jesus had to actually get crucified and, and, and destroyed on the cross, guys. Because of God's wrath. But man, the love that He demonstrated on that cross was so amazing because... We deserved it. Jesus said no. Just imagine this. Imagine this. We're all standing before a judge. Right? We'll, we'll just say the Father is the judge. I'll just paint a picture. The Father is the judge. And we're all standing before this judge, right? And income, and, and we're all sentenced to death. 100% death, no matter what. And we're all about to be sentenced. And income walks in Jesus Christ. And he says, Father, they're mine. Mm -hmm. And he walks. He Imagine him carrying that cross. Carrying it for us. So that we didn't have to carry it. That's love. There's no greater love than that. So if there's anything that you love in this life, love the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Son of Man. The Son of Man. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter number 12. We're going to start in verse 7. 7 to 12. Revelation. Hopefully y'all know it's the last book in the Bible. Revelation chapter 12 starting verse 7. 7 to 12. Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. I want for y'all to know the dragon is the devil. But he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. I just want to stop there for one second. Can you imagine being a holy angel and you rebel against God? Because we have to realize how cunning the devil is. And this is actually a picture of apostasy. And you might just Google that later. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ has come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. And I want for you all to understand that this, these are the martyrs in the tribulation period. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now that the devil knows his time is short right now. His time has been short for a long time. And he already know, he's already lost. You all understand that? It's already done. He's already been defeated. It's already finished. Imagine... And I want to share this again, and I've shared this before, but I just want for you to really think about this, and I pray that I can get this right, because otherwise my wife might be like, I have to tell the story for me. Anyways. So imagine this. We're in this period of life right now. Okay, so just picture this in your mind. God knows the beginning from the end. Okay? Which means, the Bible says that the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Okay? So that means that he knows the beginning from the end. He's all-knowing, all, -knowing, all uh, knowledge. I mean, he's a God of knowledge, a God of wisdom. He knows everything. And we are born, right? We're all conceived. We come out of our mother's womb. And we're all born as sinners. Um, but of course, innocent children are innocent. <laughs> but what happens is, is that he allows us to live a life up to a certain point until that moment when we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we have a decision, right? Some of us are saved. Some of us might reject it. He already knows. But I say this because it's like a recorded football game. It's already recorded. This life that we live right now is already recorded. But we're living in time. Am I right here? We're living in time. So since we're living in time and God is outside of time, and the Bible said that this life is like a vapor and then it's gone, we don't realize how fast time goes and how short our time is here. Because eternity is forever, like the sandlot, right? Forever. And as we talked about in here, uh, that the angels rebelled against God. Hell was created for the fallen angels, 
But then what did God do? He loves us enough to where He doesn't force us to do what we don't want to do. He's sovereign. But He allows us to go through this life. And we're all going to live in one of two places, heaven or hell. And that's why we're to get the gospel out. That's why we are to demonstrate the love of Christ for everyone. But I want to go back to the analogy. So we are continuing on, and God is outside of time, but he allows us to go through this continuously in this life until the time ends. But there's going to be time, and I shared this on Facebook earlier. There's going to be a time where the age of grace is over. And then wrath will come upon the world. And I just pray that we really understand the glory that we're going to be able to have in Christ. And to not be scared about anything in this world. And I want to go back to the fruits of the Spirit for a minute and talk about the humanity of Christ and close out. Don't be afraid of the things that you're going through to know constantly that the Son of Man has been through it all. He, he lived this life in the flesh. He's been through it all so he can understand the, the, the struggles and the temptations and the battles and, and the trials and the suffering. He understands all of that. But at the same time, as once we come to know Christ, we're called to live in holiness. Which means... We're called to let go of that old self and we're called to walk in the newness of life, being led by the fruits, being led by the Holy Spirit to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit so that, and I'll tell you right now, guys, um, it's a lot easier if you submit to Him rather than not because uh, you can be saved, but if, you're, if you choose to continue to just kind of live the rebellious way that you want to live, then it's, you're making it way harder than it has to be. Um, but living in the flesh is tough. I'll tell you that right now. But always know these two things. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And number two, we are to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit and to know that God is inside of you. Christ is in you. And we have the ability to demonstrate that to everyone around us, no matter where we are. And also, I want to just encourage us to spend time with the Lord every day. And I say that because the more time that we dedicate to Him, whether it be in the Word or in prayer or in worship, the more love that He's going to pour upon us inside of our hearts that will enable us to put that love and grace and mercy upon others. Because if we feed, if we feed ourselves with things of the world, then just think about it. If you feed yourself with things of the world, then the things of the world aren't going to produce good fruit. They're going to just produce dead fruit. But if we fill ourselves with things of God, then now we can demonstrate those fruits of the Spirit in a way that will show others Christ. Because what is our number one responsibility? To show others Christ in us. To demonstrate the fact that we're not like the world. We aren't like the world. And it's an honor to know, and I'm going to close out and read this. It's an honor to know that we belong to Him and we have this in our back pocket. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption. I want for you all to really think about the fact that you were adopted by the Lord. For adoption to Himself as sons 
through Jesus Christ, and of course it's daughters as well, but this the the uh, culture back then. According to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. We are the Beloved. It's funny, when I first started saying Beloved, I was kind of like, it's kind of hard to say, you know, because you're like, we're the Beloved, the body of Christ, the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. And I want to emphasize it again, guys. If there's any unforgiveness in your life, just let it go because it's just causing you to be a prisoner to your own self. According to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us, lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, being in the Father's will. According to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Him we have obtained an inheritance. Having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things, all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. Can you just eat those words up or what? Man. Alright, last scripture, I promise. John four John chapter fourteen. John chapter fourteen. And this will close it out. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were so, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I want to tell you right now that Jesus is preparing a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas, uh, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Oh, doubting Thomas here. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so in verse number 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself that where I am, you may also be. Someday the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take us home forever and ever and ever. He is our blessed hope. Our blessed hope. Because we as, as believers here, the Bible says that our citizenship is in heaven. We are here, but we belong to Christ. And He will someday take us to Himself for those that are in Christ, for those that are sealed by the Holy Spirit, and to know that no matter of the battles that you're going through, because He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry about the things that you're going through, because I have chosen you before the foundation of the world, because I have given you an inheritance to where I have given you every single ounce of everything that belongs. Christ says, as we did on Sunday, we are heirs with Christ, which means everything He has, we have. Every single ounce of blessings, we have that. And so today, as we close out the Son of Man message, I want to tell you that He loves you. And His Holy Spirit will lead God and direct everything that you do. But every single day that we wake up is a walk with Christ. And every day He says, and this kind of is going to lead into Sunday's message, He says 
that we must pick up our cross and follow Him. It's not going to be easy. But we know that with Him, we have everything. Every blessing under heaven and earth belongs to us because we belong to the Son of Man. I love you guys.